but if we flip this switch Before we look at some examples, let's just real quick talk about kind of what the IAC valve is and what it's capable of. So at the end of the day, all that the auto control valve is, is a controlled vacuum leak. It's a valve that opens and closes based off of how you program it. But the big takeaway and what you need to keep in mind is that with the idle control valve all the way closed, there's no air going through it. And with the idle control valve all the way open, that is as much air as that valve can flow. In a lot of instances, I think a lot of you are looking for the idle control valve to do way more than what it's actually capable of. So in this video, I'm gonna kind of show you some of the differences by using an engine simulator to take the actual running engine out of the equation. It's gonna make it a lot easier to sort of paint the picture on how this works. Uh, then we'll do a couple examples on a running car. Obviously, I can't go over every setting and every detail in one YouTube video. <sighs> that sucks. So uh, if I'm going a little too quick for you or you'd like to see some of these settings broken down a little bit further, if you click on the link in the description below, I can email you a PDF where I've broken down a lot of this stuff a lot further. Oh, we gotta slow it down. Let's take a look at kind of some of these options and take a look at how the idle control is actually working. And hopefully it will allow you to wrap your head around what's actually going on and what's possible, what's not, and how to look at the data and figure out what you need to change in order to get your car to idle the way that you want. All right, I'm gonna be using Terminator X for this as that's what I have connected to the simulator. Well, the HP Dominator software is nearly identical and the Sniper software is basically the same except we have a couple of less options. Actually makes it a little bit easier. So we're gonna take a look at an IAC parked in an actual running car. Basically that leaves us uh, this IAC settings tab to play with here on the simulator. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to set up our data monitor so that we can actually keep an eye on what's happening so we know what to change. So if you click on this little E here, we're just gonna drag some of these channels over so that we can see all the data real time. Now I'm gonna make the assumption that your fueling and stuff is already taken care of. If you wanted to keep an eye on coolant temperature, oil pressure, any of the health type stuff, you can obviously drop that into this. But for this example, I'm just putting the idle related stuff that you absolutely have to take a look at. So we're gonna want TPS, RPM, target idle speed, IAC position, and ignition timing. And if you want, you can also put base timing on here. So the base timing is what's in the ignition table, and then the ignition timing is what's actually happening. And if you're using the spark-based idle control, you'll see that these numbers are gonna change. So that's the easiest way to see how much is changing. Now that we have all these channels on here, the last thing we want to do is give this a name since this is all of our idle control stuff. Only one name makes sense. He called the shit poop. <laughs> now you can see over here on the left, we can take a look at all of those channels that we just dropped into that monitor. So the first thing that you need to do is choose an idle speed that's gonna work for the car, the engine, the cam, a combo, and all that good stuff. And you're better off starting high and working your way down. And if you go and get in your grandma's Toyota Camry or any modern car, you're gonna notice that the cars are gonna idle higher when the coolant temperature is cold. So you might wanna do something along the lines of this. And say we we'll call 180 degrees warmed up. You can fill row value. So you'll see that it will taper off with coolant temperature. But for this example, we'll just set everything at a fixed 1000 RPM. It'll make it easier to see some of the other demonstration stuff. So we'll start here with idle spark. I usually turn this off when I'm first tuning the engine. And once I have everything idling the way that I want, then I'll re-enable it. Uh, my process on how I do idle control will kind of change car to car because some cars are really difficult to get to idle the way that you want and other ones are nice and simple. So we'll leave this enabled since I'm about to show you how this works. And we'll go to the ignition table and you can see the whole thing is just set to 20. Again, just for demonstrative purposes so you can see how this idle control timing works. All right, the first thing that you're gonna notice here is our base timing is 20. Like I said, that's what's in the table. And then our ignition timing is 12. So those don't match. If we turn off this idle spark, goes right back to 20. I didn't see that coming. So obviously this idle spark is why that timing is being removed. And if you look at our target idle speed and then our actual engine RPM, the engine RPM is higher, so it's trying to pull timing to bring the speed down. Now the next thing you need to notice here is that our TPS is at 0%. So watch what happens if we increase the TPS. And two is the magic number here. So it's one, no change, two. Now everything's jumping around. And once we go above two, you can see our idle spark 
has now disabled itself. So now our actual ignition timing is matching our base timing again. So bring our TPS back down. Now you can see we have an eight degree difference here. So now watch what happens when we go below our target idle speed. Now you see that we just went eight degrees in the opposite direction. So basically our idle spark has a plus or minus of eight degrees and changing these P and D terms does not change that eight degree swing. It just changes kind of the rate in which the timing is added and then subtracted. And we go into this stuff in much more detail in my course. We have basically a video on each one of these settings. So if you wanted to simplify this for yourself, just to get the understanding of it, you can basically put the, Z, the D term at zero or match what you're doing with the P term. So that was a P term of 40. Watch what happens if we do a P term of one. Now you can see how much slower the ignition timing is moving. And basically it's d directly proportional to how far away from the target that we are. So if we change this to 80 without the RPM moving, you can see it shot all the way to our max of eight degrees. If we go to two, three, four. So you can see how changing that number, again, it's going to dictate how fast or how slow it adds or removes ignition timing based off of the amount of air that there is. And if we go to, I don't know, say 60 on the P term, we'll do the same thing with the D term. Go to one, no change, five, no change, 50, 100. So you can see what the D term does is nowhere near as aggressive as what the P term does. The P term is the star of the show here. So don't be afraid to move this number around and see how the car reacts. You can do this. All right, if you hop over here to IEC control, here's a big one where a lot of people are afraid to experiment and you're really just shooting yourself in the foot by doing that. So we wanna set our IEC type to whatever it is that we're actually using. And you actually see that there's an option here for none. It's just great for diagnostic purposes. If you're ever having idle control issues, just turn the idle control valve off or unplug the idle control valve and see what happens. And that can let you know if your problems are related to the idle control or if they're related to the actual way that the engine is running. So we'll just leave this on stepper, but the advanced idle control is the one that you can play with. And everybody always just leave this on whatever the drop down option is for their idle control valve. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the difference between a few of these so you can see that you can click on whatever you want. And ultimately all that these drop downs are doing is changing these PID control settings. Man, what? So if you're feeling crazy, you can come in here and you can adjust all of this stuff yourself, but the drop downs actually do a good job at kind of giving you some starting points. All right, we're gonna keep this simple. All of this ISC ramp down stuff would technically have an effect on this if we were taking TPS into the equation. But all I want you to do is watch the IEC position here. So we're at 3000 RPM, we're gonna go below our target idle speed so that it tries to just ramp the IEC position all the way up as fast as it's programmed or designed to do. So if we come back down, look how slow and how long that takes for the IEC position to come all the way up to 100. And this is what I'm talking about, how the IEC control valve isn't magic. If that engine was falling and trying to stall, that slow IEC you know, ramp over the course of several seconds isn't gonna be enough to stop it. So the engine needs to run well on its own and then the IEC valve is just to kind of stabilize it. It's not just gonna, it's not a brick wall that's gonna prevent the engine from stalling. That's stupid! All right, now let's go to slow. We'll do the same thing. You can see this going much slower than before. So I'll be old and dead before that gets to 100. So now we'll go to fast. And we'll come back down. And you can see that went to 100 over the course of, I don't know what that was, one second. So looking at this, you might naturally think that fast would be better to prevent the engine from stalling. But a lot of times what ends up happening is if you're too aggressive with this, it'll overshoot, undershoot, overshoot, undershoot, and then you'll get that surging idle. All right, moving on down. I'm not gonna go into this stuff too deep as I cover what all of it is in that PDF. So just go download that. But I do wanna show you a couple of things here. So basically once our engine RPM goes below the target, it's gonna open up the idle control valve. And if it's too high, it's gonna bring it down. But what's a little bit interesting is the actual behavior of the IEC position once you reach your target is going to change kind of depending on how far it was before it got to the target. What did he say? So let's show you what I mean here. So our target and our actual engine RPM match. So our IEC position is just holding at a fixed value. It's not moving. So as far as the computer is concerned, it's taking us 42% of IEC position to achieve our target idle. 
But watch what happens once we move away from our target and then come back to our target. You would think that the IAC position would end up at the same spot, but it doesn't. So if we move away, bring it back. Now it's at eight. The other direction, bring it back, 41. So that's just something to keep in mind. Theoretically, once the engine is running, this should match a whole lot better, but it just gives you a little bit of perspective on kind of how that works. All right, next thing we're gonna look at, we're gonna crank our engine RPM up pretty high. Now you see our IAC position is at zero because it thinks we're idling at 5,000 RPM, but watch what happens once we bring our TPS up above that 2%. Comes up and you can see that it stopped at 40. And this is one of the things that everybody freaks out about because when they're driving their IC positions at 40% and they go nuts. It never ends this shit. But if you look up here at our IEC hold position, it's not coincidence. And next thing we're gonna look at here is if we bring our TPS, we're at 4,500 RPM. If we bring our TPS down to zero, nothing happened. It's still holding the IEC at 50%. That's where this number here comes into play. So I used 1,000 RPM as our target idle speed to make the math real easy for you here. So we have 1,000 RPM here, 1,000 RPM here. So if we add those two together, that's 2,000 RPM. I knew it. So think of this as you're driving and now we're gonna come to a stop. So we let off the throttle and our RPM comes down. Turn your hazard lights on when you see them hoes. Drive slow, homie. Now we're right above 2000 RPM. Now watch what happens as soon as we go even one RPM below that. Now we've re-entered our idle control mode. All right, so realistically staring at this stupid little data screen is gonna be nearly impossible while you're driving the car. So if you're not using the data log feature in your Holly EFI system, you need to be. Major key to success. I'm gonna do two logs real quick, one using our advanced idle control at slow, the other one using fast, and I'm gonna show you how we can overlay them on top of each other. And that's how you really start dialing in your idle control as you can overlay things and see what changes you're making and what effect they're having on the idle. So we need to set up a graph with all of the same channels that we had previously. I'm not doing anything with timing, so we won't worry about that right now. And we gotta give it a name again. Poop again. And now you can spend as much time as you want analyzing all of this stuff. So now you can see here that our actual engine RPM is higher than our target idle speed. So our IAC position is zero. And then the actual engine RPM comes below the target idle speed. So it progressively brings the idle control valve up and then it gets to 100% because there was no change in actual engine RPM. But since there's a split between the two, it's gonna try and bring the ISC valve in. Now, let's bring on the fast drop down and overlay it on top of this so you can actually really see real world how powerful the comparison tool is on the data logger. Now, same thing, you see here that once our engine RPM dropped below the target, we have this, these two points basically lined up. Look how much faster the ISC ramped in. The dotted line is the comparison file and the solid line is the initial file. So if you use the timestamps, we we'll click here. You can see with the ISC control valve basically went from zero to 100 in 1.4 seconds. And the slow setting took 10.7 seconds. So a gigantic difference in how those settings will control the idle control valve. So don't be afraid to experiment with them. I'm not afraid. Next up we have the IAC parked position. And you can see this one is cool and temperature based too. And this one's just kind of the equivalent of putting your foot on the throttle uh, when the engine is cold. So for this, we're going to hop over here and I'm gonna show you basically what 0% and 100% does on an engine. And you can see what the difference is. Now this car over here is drive-by-wire, but it works exactly the same. Just rather than having an idle control valve, it just simply opens and closes the throttle to react the same way that an idle control valve would. So this car starts perfectly normal, hot, cold, whatever, uh, with normal IAC park position values in it. So for this first test here, we're gonna try with the IAC park just at 0% and see if it will even start and run. I suspect it probably will, it might struggle a little bit. And then we're gonna shut it off, we're gonna set it to uh, 100, and then we're gonna start it again and see if we can't bounce this thing off the rev limiter, start it up. So let's see what happens. All right, so the main thing that we're watching here is engine RPM. All right, that's actually good that it didn't start. I did a carburetor swap, plus fuel injections for pussies. Now let's do the same thing at 100% ISC position. Now you can see the thing 
idles really, really high. So as you can see there, 0% obviously wasn't enough. The car wouldn't even start and run. 100% was way too much. The car idled really, really high. So the tuning process would be finding that happy medium uh, to where the car fires up the way that you want. And then also keep in mind, this is cool and temperature based. So you're gonna kind of have to figure out what that magical value is at each different coolant point. Now, especially with drive-by wire and custom tables is where you can really get the thing to do what you want it to do, which is nice. So I'm gonna show you one quick example on that real quick, and then we'll wrap this thing up. So you can see here, car is idling nice and calm and respectable. My neighbors wouldn't want to fight me. But if we flip this switch, I can introduce a custom table. And now we can drink bush light and grow a mullet. If we really want to get crazy, we could go to switch number three. We could introduce a burble tune, and then we could drive to the top of a mountain and launch the car off of the side of it to make the world a better place. But with custom tables, you can basically create any offset based off of anything. And in this situation, I just have it on a switch. Only for demonstrative purposes. No, I won't drive a car like this. All right guys, so that's uh, this much of how your idle control works. So definitely make sure that you uh, drop down in the description, get that PDF so you can get a little bit more of a breakdown on what all the different tables and settings are. And if you're interested in learning far more and uh, watching basically individual videos on each one of these settings and stuff, I do have a full course. I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. But as you can see, the idle control is without question the most tedious part of tuning. And just for example, if you take your car, like you drive your car to a tuner and he tunes it that same day and then you leave, he's not going to have the ability to tune any of these coolant temperature based idle control tables. So the Holly idle control is pretty straightforward if you're familiar with the stuff. So you can kind of put your best educated guess in as far as what it's gonna want and need at the lower coolant temperatures. But if you really wanna dial your car in 100% exactly the way that you want it, the way you like to drive it, it seems that really the only true way of going about that is doing it yourself. So the more you can learn about this stuff, the more adjustments you can make yourself, uh, the happier you're gonna be.